OSHA's workplace guardrail requirements can get a little confusing, so let's go over some of the most important things to know. What is guardrail? A guardrail is a stationary fixed fall protection system designed to prevent workers from stepping over the edge of a walking working surface. OSHA 1910.29b is the portion of OSHA regulations that deal with requirements for guardrail that employees need to follow to make sure workers are protected. Let's break the guardrail down into three parts. There are the top rail, the mid rail, and the vertical posts. Each of these parts needs to comply with OSHA's rules, like material type, size, height, and location. What are the major requirements from OSHA 1910.29b? Let's go over them. The top height of the top rails must be 42 inches, give or take three inches, above the walking working surface. The top edge height can be more than 45 inches, as long as the guardrail system meets all the other criteria. Guardrail is required for any platform four feet or higher above a lower floor or the ground. If there's not a wall or parapet at least 21 inches high, then mid-rail should be installed halfway between the top edge of the guardrail and the walking working surface. If screens and mesh are used, they should extend from the walking working surface to the top rail and along the entire opening between the top rail supports. Intermediate vertical members, such as balusters, should be installed no more than 19 inches apart. Guardrail systems need to be strong enough to withstand a force of at least 200 pounds at any point along the top rail. This force is applied in a downward or an outward direction within two inches of the top edge. When tested in a downward direction, the top rail of the guardrail system must remain at least 39 inches above the walking working surface. Mid rails, screens, mesh, and solid panels need to withstand without failure a force of at least 150 pounds applied in any downward or outward direction. Guardrail systems need to be smooth surfaced. Doing this prevents employees from getting injured from punctures, lacerations, and snag clothing. OSHA also requires that the ends of top rails and mid rails don't hang over the terminal posts. The one exception is if there isn't a projection hazard post. Similarly, you can't use steel and plastic banding for top rails and mid rails, and guardrails need to be at least a quarter inch size and diameter. When dealing with hoist areas, OSHA states that guardrail systems need a removable guardrail section placed across the access opening while not in use. As has been mentioned before, the section needs a top rail and mid rail. Guardrail systems used around holes must be installed on all unprotected sides or edges of the hole. If materials are passed through the hole, no more than two sides of the guardrail can be removed at a time. When materials are not being passed through the hole, it needs to be guarded by a guardrail system or closed over with a cover. When used around holes that serve as points of access, the guardrail system opening needs to have a self-closing gate that slides or swings away from the hole. The gate must have a top rail and mid rail that meets the requirements discussed in this video. Ramps and runways need guardrail on each unprotected side or edge. You can use manila or synthetic rope for top rails or mid rails if they pass OSHA strength requirements. Diversified fall protection provides a range of OSHA compliant guardrail and safety railing to protect your team. Visit our Fall Protect blog for additional information about the requirements for guardrail. Also follow the links below to watch an overview of our guardrail and the process of installing our systems. For all other questions or concerns, visit our website at www.fallprotect.com. Thank you.